Hi, it's Mind Crypto here. I hope we're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. I hope we're having a wonderful day. I know I am. The weather here in the UK is absolutely wonderful. And today we're going to talk about NXRA, Next Era Alliance Blog. And we're going to we're going to briefly talk a bit about tokenization. I've also got a clip of Rashida Jaja, the CEO, talking about tokenization and where we, he sees the future of the blockchain and more and more um, partnerships coming in the future, um, which is absolutely awesome. So we're going to look at the fear and greed index today. So its market cap is under a trillion. It's zero point down, 0.01%. Um, volume in the last 24 hours is down 46.4%. And BT. BTC dominance up at 0.05 and we're looking we're still in fear 48 so right bang in the middle between fear and greed so we're just going to move over here to the crypto bubbles as you can see it's looking pretty red but this is too expected over the weekend this is you know generally it's all it, it is normally quite red and we'll find that possibly because uh, there's a lot less trading everybody's out I've been out today so I've only just taken a look at the the charts um because you know I don't look at them all the time I try not to because obviously you'd be quite obsessed with it because I'm sure a few quite a few out there are constantly looking at their charts especially if you're a trader and you've made a trade that day and you're looking and waiting um, um, so let's look at NXRA Alliance blog where we are at. So, oh, we're up ranked. We're today ranked for 413, which is great. Um, we're up 0 0.8 in the last hour, um, but in the last day we're down 1.9%. Um, market cap 38.3 million, um, and we're down 5.3% on the week. And ish. 33.9% on the month. Um, but, you know, I'm not bothered. I'm a hodler. I'm going to hold this out. I'll probably DCA during the summer months when we'll find that maybe the price will dip and keep buying those dips. DCA, dollar cost average is the best way forward. Um, remember that none of this is financial advice. Uh, and also, please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell because I'm finding that about 70% of my viewers are not subscribed. So you'd be doing me a massive favour if you could hit that button because it's, it's no biggie, really. It's just a button, you hit it, and then if, you, if my videos pop up and you know you don't want to watch them, don't watch them. But it'd be just nice, you might see something that you, you like. So I do talk about a lot of utility coins. Um, I, I see myself as a utility maxi. Just looking at Twitter uh, and um, Sheila Jaja, he was a speaker on this event, which is Real World Assets and Tokenizations um, Twitter Space event on back in May the 12th. Some of you, you may, may have heard it, but I, I've clipped out the bit that I think is most important of Rashida Jaja talking about the future of Alliance Block and tokenization. Um, you know, bridging trade fi to DeFi, whether that be through artwork, all those illiquid assets that are within trade fi at the moment that could be brought to DeFi um, in the future. And right now, some of them are. If we look at uh, art banks and ABO and all the rest of it, they they are they are building. They're moving forward. I love the fact that. Rashid is so upbeat in his talks and you know in general persona it, you know it's really nice to, to to hear and especially if you're when you're researching and you've got that voice in your head when you've you've heard that the CEO is really upbeat really positive and, and always talking about a bright future for Alliance blog that always makes me feel quite good and also they've got a huge partnership with Con <laughs> you know I'm probably biased because you know, I like all the European coins as well, but I'm I'm in quite a few of the the US coins as well. But it seems like the US don't really want crypto at the moment. But maybe that's just all a ploy. Anyhow, so let's get on. Let's let you listen to the clip, and here we go. Thank you very much, uh, Gary, your team, and everyone for having us. I think it's cool. Now it's been today. It was really great milestone because, as you saw, like Galileo is uh, is is in founders. So like, and we have been working a lot together lately. And uh, I'm pretty impressed about what the team has been doing, the way that they have been iterating super fast, and also their vision, which is really great actually to be able to work uh, like with you guys. So on our side, so our alliance block, so if I need to summarize it, I would, uh, I would say in one sentence, we are really now, we can say that we are building decentralized capital markets, which is compliant, which will go, which will try really to enhance what happened on the traditional, I would say, financial space, okay? But leveraging also all the innovation that is happening. One of the most important things is that tokenization, as I said before, is not new. So tokenization exists since 
10 like a ten, like 10 maybe even 20 years i think before even the t- 2000s which uh, which was called securitization so how can you securitize assets it could be loans it could be any kind of structured products but the problem is in 2008 we had this huge subprime pri- crisis because of this complex structured product that are opaque and actually we couldn't see what's happened inside and then we had this huge domino effect because some people defaulted and then it triggered like big uh, institutions that actually was like a, like defaulted okay so now tokenization is just a new way of doing securitization okay but what is really good is that it's using blockchain so it's completely transparent okay so everyone knows what is happening inside and also tokenization we have been speaking about let's say ICOs back in 2019 so which was the new wave after ICO but unfortunately, when we have these tokenized securities, tokenized stocks, or even tokenized uh, real world assets, because it exists already, it's not completely new. But the problem is always the liquidity. How can you get access to liquidity? So either you are between institutions that they are permissioned network, which are doing the same things as if they were outside between them, which doesn't bring enough liquidity, doesn't bring enough yield, which is actually so like it doesn't work out. Okay. Oh, you're just tokenizing fancy things, but you cannot do anything because you cannot sell them or you cannot trade them. Okay. But now we have like absolutely the technology not only to tokenize, but also to be able to provide liquidity because of DeFi. So really DeFi, I would say, is really the door opening to be able to make real world asset tokenization reality. But when we speak about tokenization of real world assets, you need to understand also that behind there is we need like to be able to buy them. We need to trade them. We need like to be able to have like all the compliance check because at the end, this is what will make also real world. And we saw lately SNP, which is one of the biggest trading agency in the world. They have their DeFi and basically they are working a lot with institutions to rates. I would say this, this, uh, this, uh, this platform that are providing liquidity to real world assets and that provide real world, uh, real yield, I would say. Okay. So tokenization is absolutely important. So for us on our side, we are really focusing so on on something very important. So uh, Pierre, you said something important. NFT is not just pixel. We see NFTs also as data container, which are mutable. So you can they can evolve over time. So if you have a bond or if you have real estate, real estate, for example, it can it can grow in value. Okay. If you have art, it can grow in value. It can decrease in value. It can, for example, it can represent also a basket of different like art piece or basket of different real estate or whatever kind of uh, like uh, the underlying assets that we are tokenizing. Okay, so when you take uh, like a, um, and then you have the mutability, so evolving of this asset, then you have what we call the composability. So you should be able actually to attach, detach data and metadata or your assets. Okay, and it needs to be linked to certain identity. And the last point is extensibility, being able to add more information because sometimes you can get an asset, it's sold, so you need to sell, to sell ownership and so on and so forth. Of course, you need to record all the transactions. So now with this on-chain data container, it makes this reality. So you can really have, like I would say, tokenization, the, the way that we can see it in the traditional world with all the information inside. So it's not like uh, just sitting outside of the data container. Okay? So for on our side, we are focusing on three big use cases. So the first big use case is art. So as you saw, art banks, tokenization of 1.5 billion assets under management from tokenization to fractionalization to trading, taken into account compliance because they have 500 uh, ultra high net worth individual that they have arts between 30 million to 100 million that need to find liquidity. So we are the middle layer to bring the compliance, the technology and the liquidity. The second use case is inventory. So inventory backed uh, financing is it's huge because inventory is actually like trillions of dollars, okay? Lots of assets that are sitting on inventory that they can be financed. So this is the second use case that we will speak about it later on. And the last one basically is everything around cardboard credits, but the teams will announce something very soon. So yeah, so tokenization is amazing. I think we have like amazing people here tackling different problems with different solutions. But yeah, so we I do believe the next like uh, two, three, four years, we will see huge uh, like uh, um, discussions about tokenization secondary market analytics about these tokenized reward assets. Thank you guys again for having us. So there you go, guys. Absolutely amazing. And as you can see, Rashida Jaja constantly upbeat, really positive, talking about tokenization, the future. You know, he's, he's in between four and five years. I'm really happy with that. That's a great plan. I think the fact that, you know, we're probably going to see a, a pump in price. 
over the next two years because I think we're hit, we're going to hit a bull run in 2025. We've got the halving bit uh, of BTC next year, so the price is going to start running anyway. It'll run with everything else, but I think what he's talking about is getting people onboarding people, and, and you know, and this this particular um, bridging will start to take effect over over the, that amount of years. Absolutely amazing. Anyhow, so. Understanding trading psychology better. And there's an art to mastering trading psychology. And your emotions, fears, hopes, and dreams will change over time. And you need to be able to adapt to that. And that's very much like an entrepreneurial um, mindset in some ways, of being able to adapt, to adapt, to pivot in a situation which most entrepreneurs learn through experience. And that's the same with crypto. Crypto needs time to consolidate after a big run up and so do humans. We need time to integrate the mental and emotional skills behind our big wins. Uh, and if you if you give in to sloppy trading, there's often a thought or an emotion behind that decision. You need to find out what happened and work to correct it. And a lot of people recommend taking the emotions out of trading, which is great, and I recommend that, but it's it's near impossible to do it 100%. You know, we are humans. Instead, figure out your goals and remind yourself how trading can help you achieve them. So that be your focus. Anyhow, guys, catch you tomorrow. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Always do your own research.